Hello, everyone. Welcome to Kids Time with Jesus, brought to you by the Church of Pentecost USA. Once again, we are so excited to come your way. This is the place where our precious children learn about God's word and they share it with you. So mom, dad, grandparents, grab everybody, come and have a seat. If you have to get some water, get some water, get a snack, and let us delve into the word of God. Thank you all for tuning in, and thank you all, precious ones, for zooming in. We have our friends that are on this Zoom with us that are going to really help us to delve into the word of God. So before we go any further, let us introduce ourselves. So all right, friends, please introduce yourselves to everyone. Hi, my name is Aria Laquata, and I'm from the Hartford District in Connecticut. Hi, my name is Joel Morgan, and I'm from Patterson District. Hi, my name is Declan Ford from Cleveland District. Hi, my name is Darren Ford from Cleveland District. Oh, my name is Benedict Dubois from Cincinnati District. Hi, my name is Esther Morgan, and I'm from Patterson District. Hi, Hi my, my name is Ampa, and I'm from New Jersey Region. Hello, my name is Frank Ekoforsa, and I'm from New Jersey Region. District. Hi, my name is James from PIWC, New York District. Well, hello everyone. God bless you for coming. Well, friends, thank you so much for joining in. Now, today we have a wonderful, wonderful person with us. Okay, we are so lucky. Today, for our lesson, we actually have one of our elders. His name is Elder James. But we, can get, we get to call her Uncle James, okay? So you can call her Elder James or Uncle James because he's our uncle, because he was our Sunday school teacher and still is, but he has so many other things doing in the church. So once in a while, we get him over to come and help us out here. So today we are going to talk about praise and worship and what better person to help us with that lesson because Uncle James, his ministry, is actually a praise and worship leader, okay? So boys and girls, we are so lucky to have him today. And he is the one who is going to actually teach us a lesson on praise and worship. Now, the good thing is that every month, Uncle James will come our way and he will teach us about praise and worship. Now we call it Praise Moments with Uncle James, okay? So today we're going to have one of our praise moments with Uncle James. So all of you children, let us say hello to Elder James. Hello to Uncle uh -huh. James. Hi guys. Hi. Hello Elder James. Hi guys. Hello Uncle James. God bless you Thank so you, much. Uncle. God bless you so much for having <laughs> us and coming to teach us this very important things. Now. I'm glad to be here. Wonderful. We are so glad you're here. So, boys and girls, before we even go any further, we're going to continue with how, you know, we are getting to know the Bible. The things that we as Christians really have to know about the Bible and how you guys have already been learning the word apologetics for children, right? That you really want to know the basis of the Bible so that you know God for yourself and know that maybe your father goes to church. That's why you also go to church, but you're knowing God what for yourself. So let us begin to do just a little quiz, right? I call it just a little, you know, something about how well we know the Bible. Okay. So the first one I want to ask you is that anyone, any one of us, can you name the first five books in the Old Testament. The first five books in the Old Testament. Ariel, you are up. The first five books of the Old Testament. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. All right. Do you all agree? Yes. yes. That is awesome. Good job, Ariel. Way to go. All right. Well, how about the first five in the New Testament? The first five in the New Testament. Esther. The first, the first five 
books in the New Testament are Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Good job, Esther. So you see, guys, what we're doing is that when you know these things and you go to church and then there's preaching and the pastor says, let us open our Bible, then you are not going to your book of contents, right? You know exactly where it is so that you can just open and then you can read it, right? Okay, let's keep going. Now, good, 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 good. Wow, you guys are really Bible students. That's awesome. Now, there's some two people in the Bible that did not die. But they went to heaven. Who are those? Joel. Elijah and Enoch. Elijah and Enoch. Anything else anybody wants us to tell us about Elijah? Elijah was a really powerful prophet. Yeah, Darren. Powerful prophet was afraid of women. He ran away from just <laughs> <laughs> <to die. laughs> Well, that is true. That is Oh, Darren, that's a good one. Yeah, James, go ahead. I know. <laughs> he came to heaven in a chariot of fire. Yes, he went to heaven in a chariot of fire. Guys, can you wrap your mind around it? He went to heaven in the chariots of fire. Oh, my God. Then the last one that we want to uh, talk about is who was the tallest man in the Bible? Oh, I think that one we all... Uh, Ampa, who was the tallest man in the Bible? Oh, it's Goliath. Goliath. Yes, yes, yes. That giant. Yeah. And then he really found out too quick not to mess with God's people, right? Who can uh, tell us a little about that? Um, Joel. So when um, David came, he started mocking David like, about like, how small he was. And then David said that um, with God by his side, that he'll be able to defeat him. And then he um, he threw stone to his head and he fell. That's right. God bless you, James. You want to add to that? I think I had I saw your hand up. Yeah. So I was, I was just going to say like a little bit of the background. So mm -hmm. David had three older brothers who were in the army because back then in um the Jerusalem Israelites, the Israelites, they had a, a certain hierarchy in the family where mm -hmm. the firstborn would get literally everything, and then the secondborn and the thirdborn, and so on. So they had like special rankings within the families. So the, the three eldest sons were the ones who society deemed as like mature people to do work. So, the, so because they were in a time of war, they went to become soldiers. And then, um, David's father sent him to bring food to his brothers who were fighting in the war. And he came and he saw Goliath was making fun of everybody. So David wanted to fight Goliath and his brothers were holding him back. And, and David was confused because the king was going to give the guy, the person who killed Goliath riches and the mm -hmm. person who killed Goliath, his daughter's hand in marriage. So he was confused that even if the if, even if the king wasn't blessing you with rewards, shouldn't you like fight for your country when this giant is here insulting your country and your God? So David goes there and he kills the giant, and then they all chase the Philistines away. That's right. That's wonderful, James. Boys and girls, if you really want to know the word of God, case time with Jesus is the place to be. Because we delve into the word of God and we have wonderful children and that would actually explain the word of God to you. It would be so amazing. Well, let's talk about today's lesson, Praise Moments with Uncle James. All right, so I'm going to share with you our topic for today. Please let me know if you can see our screen. And Can you all see it? Yep. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. So the topic for today is praise and worship. And as I told you, Uncle James is going to lead us in this discussion. So let us look at our memory verse for today. Our memory verse for today says Psalm 100 verse 5. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through generations. 
Okay, friends, let us all on the count of three, try and say our memory verses. And for everybody watching us, this is our memory verse for the week. And so please learn it and share it and also meditate on it. Okay, on the count of one, two, and three, let's go. Psalm 100, verse 5. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues all generations. Can we say it one more time? Psalm 100, verse 5. For the Lord, the Lord is, is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues in all generations. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. God bless Amen. you all. Now to our scripture readings. We have two scripture readings for today. And the first one is Psalm 100, mm -hmm. verses 1 to 5. And then Judges 5, verses 1 to 5. So let us get our friends to read for us. The first one who will read for us is Benedict. Benedict, please go ahead and read for us. Thank you, Antigua. Shout for joy to the Lord, all of the earth. Worship the Lord of gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Happy. Yeah. Four. Yes. Enter his gate with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Amen. 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 God bless you. So the next reading is Judges 5, 1 to 5, and Esther is going to read for us. So Esther, go ahead. Thank you. Judges 5, 1 through 5, and I'm reading from the NIV version. On that day, Deborah and Barak, son of Abinoam, sang this song. When the princes in Israel take the lead, when the people willingly offer themselves, praise the Lord. Hear this, you kings. Listen, you rulers. I, even I, will sing to the Lord. I will praise the Lord, the God of Israel, in song. When you, when you Lord, went out from Seir, when you marched from the Lord of Edom, the earth shook, the heavens poured. The clouds poured down water. The mountains quaked before the Lord, the one of Sinai before the Lord, the God of Israel. Amen. 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 Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful reading. God bless you all. So at this point, we will delve into our lesson. And as I told you, boys and girls, we are here with our wonderful elder James. Uncle James, we hand over to you now. So... Let us learn more about praise. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Hi, hi, children. Hi, hi, hi children. Hi. Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you guys for having me. I, I, I feel very welcome and I feel very much a part of uh, Kids Time with Jesus. So thank you guys for having me and uh, basically, we just want to get into our lesson for the day. Amen. So Amen. maybe what, what we hope to do, like Uncle and Auntie Golda said, was that we want to learn why we learn about why we should praise God, how we should do it. And then we are going to try and practice what we are learning by learning a song, which basically captures the lesson that we are having. Amen. So Amen. let's get right into it. I believe that you guys received some questions that we will try and use to discuss our, um, our lesson for the day. Amen. So Amen. Um, let's get into it and let's 
review a few of the questions in terms of um, what it means to praise God. So let me ask the question then, what does it mean for us when we say we should praise God? Um, let me see. Uh, let's see. Anyone can take a shot at it. Okay. Uh, we are recognizing his greatness. Oh. We, are, we are recognizing his greatness. Okay. Th thank you, uh, Joel. All right. I think I saw James's hand as well. We praise God. We're basically like worshiping him. Okay. We are worshiping him. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, Benedict? Acknowledging that God is God. Acknowledging that God is God. Okay. And then let's do Darren. And um, this one, I searched at Google. I searched, I used the dictionary and I found the actual definition of phrase. It means okay. to glorify someone. But then in, in like, in bracket, it said God. It means to glorify God, actually. That's okay. the definition of it. Okay. So to praise means to glorify someone, to glorify God. All right. Uh, I thought I saw someone's hand. Esther. Yes. Go ahead. Um, like Joel said, it means um, it give, we praise him for the recognition he deserves. Amen. Okay, so we're basically letting him know that we acknowledge him, right? We acknowledge who he is and we acknowledge his greatness. Okay, did I miss anybody? I think Ariel. Anybody. Ariel, okay. Yes, Ariel, go ahead. To praise God, uh, in my opinion, is to express the admiration and gratitude built up inside of us onto God. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So it is about expressing admiration for God is expressing, you know, letting him know that we glorify him or we, we, we're making him great. Okay, right? please we're one minute. Um, okay. Ampa, was your hand up? I think I saw your hand up as well. Yes, okay. go ahead. Oh, sorry, uh, I missed it that. Means, <laughs> it means like we have to praise God for his, uh, for his blessing and for his precious name. Amen, for his gracious name, for his blessing and his gracious name. Okay, so to the point, all of what you've said, you know, together just expresses the idea that to praise God means to recognize who he is, to not just recognize who he is, but to let him know how much we acknowledge and we um, appreciate who he is. So there's an element of acknowledging him right? Recognizing him. But there's also the element of being grateful to have him as our God and for, for us to be his people. And we'll get into that a little bit as we go into our questions for the day in terms of Psalms 100. Amen. All right. Amen. So, all right. So let's go into our next question, which we had. And that question says, um, in what ways can we express our gratitude or our praise to God? How do we express our gratitude or how do we express to God that really, God, I, I really see who you are and I just want you to know? Yes. Let's start from Esther. So um, what I think is we can acknowledge him, worship him and praise him. Amen. Okay. Yes, Joel. Worship him and be obedient to his word. Okay, so one way to praise God is to worship him and be obedient to him. Okay, yes, uh, James. Sing songs, worship songs to him. So one way is to sing songs to him, right? So we express our worship and our praise by singing songs to him. Yes, Benedict. You can express by singing songs, worship, and even the Bible states that if you really love me, follow my commands. So really, if you really love God, you should follow his commands and obey him. Okay, I love that. I really love that because sometimes we get stuck with just the fact that we are singing songs or we are, we, we are appreciating God in song and we forget that one very important part of praise is what? is obedience our obedience to god is a form of worship amen all right darren or declan i think one of you darren, it was darren. darren okay go ahead 
So what I was going to say is that um, pre, um, then some ways we can praise God is by actually praying to Him or talking to Him. Because if you just do that, that's actually like normal way. Whenever we are worshiping God, we are telling Him of who He is. But then when we are praising Him, like, oh God, we thank You, oh Lord, You did all of this for us. Yeah, I'm alive today, and it's because of mm-hmm. You. All of these, it's that's basically actually that is praising Him. That is praising him. All right. That's that's a very, very, very important part. Um, I'll just add, did I miss anybody? I hope not. Um, okay. All right. So I'll just add that. See, one of the things that the people of Israel learned about praising God is that they learned that praise is not like it's not something that happens just in your head. It's it's mm. it's it's expressive. It's expressive. So that's one of the things I want you guys to take away from this. Praise is expressive. Praise is, you know, we are letting God know that we appreciate him. And the way we express, we show that what is in our hearts is by expressing it. And they had different ways. There's clapping. So if you read the Psalms, you hear things like clap to the Lord, all ye people. There's shouting right people shouted to god to let him know that god you are awesome we, we just appreciate you then there is kneeling sometimes in praise you kneel to god right so you can kneel to god to show to him that you are completely surrendered to him you're completely given to him whatever he wants you to do you're willing to do it that's your posture that's your your the, the that's your attitude towards him and then another way is to what to raise your hands like I see Darren raising his hands. <laughs> so one other way of expressing your praise to God is like what, raising your hands and waving them like the way. So these are all ways in which we what we express. And of course, one of you, one of the things you mentioned earlier, I think James and a couple of other people is to sing songs, right? Because singing is it's not just in your head singing is expressive right you are expressing emotion you're expressing your thoughts so those are some of the ways that we what we 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 show to god that we are praising him i will go to darren darren you had a question or a comment i have a question i wanted to say that yeah i I used to have a question about like why we stand and close our eyes when you're praying i mean if you are just talking to god you don't need to like hi hi and things like that but then (laughs) told me that we stand because it's a way to, of showing respect to god i mean you don't want to be talking yeah yeah i might take the hr like hey and then we close our eyes to focus on him yeah you can't be um praying and then all of a sudden we see this cool guy that's <laughs> true <laughs> that's very right that's very right that's very right yes Declan. i'm going to show an example of what Adam said one day i was praying and I opened my eyes. I when I opened my eyes, it seems like the drums and organ people were talking. So I tried to just stop the praying, and then I got distracted. I don't. I mm-hmm. remember the prayer, and then boom, the prayer ended. <laughs> See, you got. You definitely have a good, a, you know, very solid experience there. So you know, the thing about praising God is that because there's so many different ways, and God is not like it's not in just one dimension. So. It's not, yes, to stand before God, you know, and praise and clap and sing and all of this. But sometimes, too, it's just to sit quietly before him. Sometimes when we are worshiping we can, or we are praising, we can sit quietly before him and just think about his goodness, right? Sometimes you hear songs about what? Think about his goodness. Think about his love. So all these things together. So that makes us that like basically when you go through all of these different ways of expressing your praise, you really become a very smart person because you learn, you know, with dealing with God that you know it, it's not just one way. There are different different ways of expressing because we are human beings and we have we are just we have so many ways of expressing what. Our praise to God. Yes, I'll take Darren and then we'll go to our next question. I just realized something. When people say, think about God's goodness, you're still actually praising God. Especially since, like, he can read your mind and he actually knows what you're thinking. So when you say, think about his goodness, you're just saying another form of just continue praying. Because you're still 
thinking about his goodness and they are saying, okay, God did this to me. He, he kept me alive. Then you are still praying. That's basically like praying. Exactly. Right. You're, yes, you're right about that. You're definitely right about that. So it, it becomes an extension, all right, a continuation of what you are already doing. Amen. Thank Amen. you, guys. Love the points you're coming up with. All right. So let's continue. So when we read um, Psalm, let's go to Psalm 100 again. When we read Psalm 100, it said something about know that, verse 3, it says, know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us. We are his, or we are, we, we belong to him. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. So the question I had was, why is it important to recognize God as Lord? Basically, the person, the psalmist was saying, God is Lord, and he's also what? Our creator. He made us. Why is it important to recognize God as our Lord and our creator? Uh, let me go to Ampa. So it's important to recognize God as our Lord because he created us in his own image. He made us in his own image. Okay, I like that, mm. Ampa. Yep, uh-huh. Who else? I think Benedict, yes. Uh, we have to acknowledge, uh, how I see it is we have to acknowledge God because we acknowledge God and we praise him. God starts to acknowledge you as being one of his mm. sheep. Let me take a, like, when you praise God, God starts to shine his blessings and shine his light down on you. So then you start to move up and get go higher and higher. So the more you praise God and the more you um, look at God and acknowledge that God is your creator, and meditating and focusing on God, the more he's going to look down on you and seeing you as a humble Christian. Amen. 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 Lovely points, Benedict. Yes, indeed. The more we praise God, the more we are acknowledging, as we acknowledge him as our creator, he also acknowledges that, oh, this is the one I made. This mm. is Declan. This is Ariel. I created Declan. I created Esther. And so if Esther comes to me and says, God, I need X or Y or Z, what do you think? God is not going to listen to you? He sure will. Because once you acknowledge him as what? As Lord and as creator, there is nothing on earth that he also is not going to make available to what? To you. That's right. You know, so that is why it is important. And, and, you know, the thing about praise and worship is that every human being, we're all created to worship. We're all created to praise. There are things we all like. If we start talking about the things we love, <laughs> we will have a lot. We'll, we'll even deviate from our lesson. But we all love certain things. Some people love sports. Some people love, you know, ice cream or love something else. And because of that, there is this sense in us that we have to praise something that is greater, to acknowledge something that is bigger and greater and more beautiful and, you know, more amazing than we are. And so it is in us. And that's why it's important for us to be careful what we worship. We have to be careful what we are worshiping. And we have to be careful that we are really recognizing that our God is our Lord, right? He has power and rulership over everything on earth, including us, and that he is what? He says, we are the sheep of his pasture. So it's like the person is saying, God, think of me as this, you know, sheep need a shepherd. So if we are the sheep of his pasture, remember the point I said, we, we said earlier, Benedict, I think, mentioned it, that the more we praise him and the more we acknowledge him as our Lord, the more he also looks on us as what? Humble people. So the psalmist says we are the sheep of his pasture. It means that God has this huge, you know, uh, uh, ranch and we are just one of the sheep in it. And we are depending on him mm. to provide our needs and to also keep us safe. So the more we praise God, the more we are saying to God, God, I'm dependent on you. 
my life is in your hands. So please protect me. Please watch over me. Please cover me. And, you know, even before we go to him and praise him with these words, he already does it. And that is even more reason for us to what? To praise him even the more. Amen. 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 James, go ahead. I think James, oh. a hand what's up and uh, Darren as well. So how about okay, we go to that. James, we go to Darren and then Benedict. Okay. okay. All, right. All right. Yes, in that order. Go ahead, guys. I was also going to say that um, our worship is also a weapon. Because there was actually a song about that that, that says that um, the, the guy was saying that the fragrance of my worship rose up to the Father mm. and then answered with noises, thunderings, and earthquakes as the response to his worship. And then he said that's how he wins his battle. So um, the Bible also says that out of the mouth of the pra- out of the mouth of pra- babes, God uses that pra- that praise to silence your enemies and the accuser, which and then in the Avengers also the devil. He's always trying these are the, the Bible says that he's the accuser mm. of the brethren. So mm. our praise also is a weapon that God can use to protect and to defeat our enemies. Amen. 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 Wow. 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 I, Amen. I, I, you Amen. guys are taking me, you're already preparing me for my next lesson. <laughs> <laughs> You're preparing right. for my next lesson. So right. I definitely know that we have to talk about how praise becomes a weapon in our mm. hands. So James, thank you for that hint. We'll definitely get to that and we'll talk a little more about that. Yes, Darren. You see, you have to praise God. James was saying if you praise God, that if is not really an answer, you have to praise God. When you read the Bible, it's in First Peter chapter 5, verse 5, it says, Mm-hmm. Like the second part, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. This is the mm. application Bible. And then this is what I'll take you. So unless you want the almighty creator of the heavens and earth against you. You, know, mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. you have mm. to praise God. Amen. Amen. You got that right, Darren. You <laughs> got that right. Definitely. You don't want to be the one who is an enemy to God. Because mm. if, like you read, if the Bible says that God opposes the proud, Wow, can you imagine God Almighty opposing you mm. or me just because we are proud and we don't want to humble ourselves before him? That's not going to be nice. Mm-hmm. Yes, I think there was somebody else who Benedict. wanted to make a comment. Benedict, yes. Benedict, go ahead. I just want to say, when something you said that, put real put my mind on it, uh, what I want to say is that when you pray, you got to put God first. Mm. When you wake up in the morning, before you even do anything, start praying, start reading your Bible. I know we all those those morning cartoons and our breakfast that we eat, (laughs) but first, (laughs) before anything that we do, put God first. Pray for like five to ten minutes because you know those cartoons are going to take us away from God. Mm -hmm. And those are the way the devil comes in sheep's clothing. Mm. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen to those. And, and those yeah. cartoons will even come back the next day. So it's not like you're missing out on anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See? Wow. I'm, I'm enjoying this time. As much <laughs> as you guys are enjoying this time, I'm enjoying this time with you. That's right. Yes. That's uh, right. Wait, hold on a minute. I think Declan and then mm-hmm. James will come again. I just wanted to add to what Benedict said, that my, my mother... My mother said this, yeah, my mother said this in the card that, let us say that you don't even worship God, you don't you worship God, but then now you have remembered, you don't remember him that much because you have put mm-hmm. on your food. And then now when you're eating, just think about this, who created the plate that, mm. you're, mm. that you're eating. And then, and then in Ecclesiastes 2, 12 verse 1, it says, remember your creator in the days of your youth. Before the days of trouble come, and the years of fruit when you see, I find no pleasure in them. Mm. Amen. Wow. Amen. Amen. Wow. Yeah, yeah. You guys are right. You guys are right. It is important to start, and that's why I, you know, I volunteered, you know, to work with Auntie Golda for us to talk about praise because we don't want to go to church or when you know, and I and, and I think it even starts from home, you know, when the family gets together to pray 
and then we are singing songs of praise or we are worshiping God and praising God. We, I want, I want kids to be part of that process because right. like James quoted from Psalms that your praise is so powerful mm-hmm. that even as a kid, your praise can destroy something that the enemy is planning. Mm. It's that powerful. It's that powerful. God can use the praise of children, even children, to what? To cause so much havoc that the enemy cannot stand it. So I really feel like it is a very important thing to get together a new generation of people who understand what it means to praise God. And that in our little ways, whether we are riding in the car to go to work or or to go to school, sorry, or (laughs) going to the mall or you know, on vacation, we can still look at the things that God has done and, and who God is as we think about him and continue to what to praise God. Amen. 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 So I think we've kind of covered this, our fourth question, which was how does recognizing our Lord and creator, as God, you know, recognizing God as Lord and creator affect the way we praise him? We've kind of gone into that a little bit of details. Now, I want to ask a question. The psalmist says that we belong to God. I think we read that earlier. Why is that reminder important? Why is it important for us to be reminded that we belong to God or he made us, like the psalmist says, he made us. Yes. Uh, Joel, why don't you go ahead? Yes, I haven't heard from Joel. He watches over us and shows us love. Say that again, Joel. He watches over us and shows us love. He watches over us and shows us love. Okay. Um, who else is here? Ariel. Let me take Ariel. Yes. Um, in um, Psalm 100 verse 3, he kind of explains, mm-hmm. uh, kind of makes an analogy saying that we are like his sheep and he is a shepherd. Mm-hmm. The job mm-hmm. of the shepherd is to keep his sheep and not let any, uh, any one of them go astray. I think okay. that's what God, um, God's trying to um, make it sound like in this conversation. In this conversation, you're right about it. We are definitely, God wants to remind us that we are his sheep. We are mm. like a big, a big pen, a big pasture of sheep. And he is the one who's watching over us. Yes. yes let me take Ampa. Uh, let me take Ampa. Yes. Oh, so I wanted to add something about what uh, what our brother said that we should put God to everything we do first. So mm-hmm. I wanted to add that uh, we have to do that because if we do not do that and take the Lord as our personal uh, savior, when Lord came to take his people to heaven, we will not go and mm. pray. So when you read the Revelation chapter 22, verse 12 to 15, it says, Behold, I am coming soon. My reward mm. And I will give to everyone according to what he has done. I am Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. Amen. Amen. So we are obedient to God so that when he comes, he will take us to heaven. Amen. 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 Okay. All right. Uh, let me take Declan. Um, you think, Declan? Yes, Declan, what did you have to say? I just wanted to add to what Alpha said, and that it says in Psalm 75 that we praise you, God. We praise you for your name is near. People mm. do your wonderful deeds. That's basically like testimonies. But mm-hmm. praise God because even if we don't, we praise God because one, he created us. Mm. That's it. Us. And we, and we also praise God because we know that, okay, God, he is all good. He is God good. That's why sometimes um, the elders in the church say, oh, God is good all the time. So mm-hmm. all his good works, good works. Like That's that. right. Number one on my list, good works. Number two, good works. Okay, that is next. <laughs> so, Amen. <laughs> all right, let me take Esther. Esther, is your hand up? Yes, but then I okay. forgot what I was going to say after Declan. Don't worry, okay. we'll come back to you. All right, we'll come back to you. Let's do Darren. Yeah, I wanted to say that while Declan was speaking, it reminded me of the scene everywhere he went. He was, he was doing good. good. Mm-hmm. 
Good job, Darren. Uh, All right. I think James Hand was also on, and Benedict on. and Esther. Yeah, hold on. Yes, yeah, so let's do Esther. Let me do Esther since Esther wanted to come earlier. I'll okay. take Esther. Esther, go ahead. Okay, so I just wanted to say that there are different times in the Bible where Jesus, there are examples of Jesus doing good, like um, healing the blind, um, um, helping the sick. Mm hmm. And there are also, like, a lot of times when some, like, of the priests didn't believe that um, he was, like, the son of God. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. That's true. So, that yes, we do know our God is good. It's interesting that you guys have moved me into the next part of the questions, which, which was, wait, wait, hold on. I think I missed Benedict. Is that you? Yeah, and James you as had, well. And James. Okay. Benedict and James. And then we'll go into the next part of yes benedict go ahead i just want to say that you need to learn to acknowledge god because if we don't god god can come anytime with opportunities and advantages mm. and new doors to open but if you don't know god and he comes to you what are you going to do just like my brother i said in revelations when he comes in the rapture and you're not part of it you're mm. going to be stuck if he comes to you and you're not ready you're doomed it's the yes. end yes Mm. Exactly, Powerful. Benedict. Powerful. Yep, you're spot on. You're spot on, James. I thank you finally, and then we'll move on. We belong to God. I was gonna say we belong to God because we're His children. You can't go and say that you don't belong to your family when you. You can't say that you belong mm -hmm. to your parents when you're their children. I was also going to mm -hmm. say that when you, we praise and worship God, God protects us because a living example of that is actually King David. He wrote like 73 Psalms in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And do you have any idea how many enemies King David had in his mm -hmm. entire life? Even King Saul, <laughs> who he was fighting for, was so mad that he tried to kill David. But David didn't die at the hands of his adversaries. He died of natural causes because David was a man who was after God's own heart. I was also going to say that another way we can worship God is actually by listening to songs because mm. worship is an attitude. It's a mindset. So it's That's not like it. basically you singing, you hearing the song, you acknowledging God's presence in your life. That's also another, another way you could worship God. Amen. Amen. Yep, 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 yep. Amen. 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 And you know, you guys have touched on something I was going to ask you about the goodness of God. When we say God is good, see, yes, when we go to church, we hear it most of the time. God is good. And then we all, all respond what? all the time, all the time. <laughs> God, God is, is good. good. And the issue here is that, see, when we say God is good, it means that he's a God who inherently he's good in, in himself. Mm. He doesn't just do good things sometimes. No. Everything about him is goodness. Even when sometimes we don't understand what he's doing. But everything about our God is what is good. good. Everything about him is good. Everything he made is good. Everything he created is good. Everything he does is good. And it is not something that he does good for a little season and then maybe he gets tired and like, no, these people don't appreciate what I do, you know. No, God doesn't get tired of doing good. Mm. He does not get tired of doing good. And that is why it makes it possible for us to continue to remind him of who he is. And we'll get to that. You know, God is good and his goodness doesn't have an end that's mm. the whole point god is good his goodness does not have an end amen, amen. all right let me see i think i have uh james and benedict i don't know who else is hand esther is also up okay so let's do james esther and then benedict and then we'll come to joel 
I'm actually going to say that God is the definition of good because if you add an extra O to God, it becomes good. And also, like like the song says that everything written about you is great. That's so, right. Okay? Not like God is good, but he is good. Like, that's who he is. That's exactly. Good. That's just like, you can't just say, oh, my God is so good because God is actually what we define as good. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, let's do, I think, I was Esther. So I just wanted to add to what you said, Uncle James, that, mm -hmm. um, what do you call it? Um, that God is like... God is like, um, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, God is like, can you come back to me? Because I kind of forgot what I got. Absolutely. No problem. We'll problem. get back to you on your train of thought. I'll take Joel. God is good because he, he, um, he provides for our needs and he shows us his everlasting love. Mm -hmm. Even in the Bible. He um he gave many characters in the Bible his everlasting love and needs. Amen. 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 Yes, yes, indeed. Okay, Esther is ready now. So let's take Esther and then we'll go to Darren and De Benedict. Uh, oh, Benedict, sorry. Benedict, yes. Uh-huh. Esther, go ahead. Um, yeah, thank you. So sometimes like God, when God does good for some people, some people call it like good luck. Or they just think <laughs> it's just a coincidence. Mm -hmm. And other times people are, people are um, like when God thinks, like when God knows that he did good, some people think that he didn't do good or it wasn't him or that thing isn't good to me. That thing mm. is not good to me. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to add that to Uncle James. That's um, a wonderful, that's wonderful, good. wonderful. Yeah, that's a very important point to remember. Yep. Right. Yeah. All that as, as um, favor. Yes. The word, the proper word there is favor. Yeah. All right, Benedict, let me take you now. I want to say two things. One, that God is passionate. And two, I don't think God is good. I think God can do better. But my, a lot of my friends don't make friends easily because they say you have to work for my respect. Mm. And just like God, you got to work and praise harder for the better of God. I know God can do good, but better things are coming your way. Because God, God already got them stored for you. You just have to be ready for him, mm. for him to send all the water at you. And that's why I said earlier, when you praise God more, God starts to look down at you. The harder you work, the better results you're going to get. So if you want better things from God, you got to be a better person inside. Amen. 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 Yeah, that's that's a very important, um, that's, a, that's a true thing that as we make that effort of seeking God and reminding and just praising him and letting him know that we appreciate him. We are grateful for who he is and what he does for us. Definitely. He looks down on us. He, you know, opens more doors. He, he, he creates and seeks that bigger and better relationship with us. Amen. Amen. Uh, there is. See if, yes. Okay. See what sometimes what I was thinking was that we too sometimes we also take for granted God's goodness. Mm. And we are alive. I mean, <laughs> some people they they don't they never wake up. You are one day old and then you are gone. Nothing happened. You just went. God said, "You know what? You are one day old, so you know what? I want to end your life." But on the bright side, you are thinking, "Oh, that is such a bad thing." What did that that guy just never had the chance to sin? Yeah, one day. Mm. A lot less chances to sin. So you're the best to go to heaven. You see, sometimes we also take for granted God's goodness. We were, we got an A plus on the test, but because we are so used to always getting A plus on the test, we say, okay, A plus, yay, haha. <laughs> <laughs> And you know, I, 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 uh, Darren, I, I'll get to you in a moment, but some, uh, sorry, Declan, um, one of the things that we're going to learn as we continue this journey is that it is possible for us to praise God even when things don't look good. Mm. That's one of the things about praise that James mentioned in terms of how praise is powerful, that even when things don't look good, like you're really down on everything, it looks like the whole world is crashing on you. That is actually the time to praise. So it doesn't make sense 
but it is the best time to praise God because you are reminding God that God, I still belong to you. You are still my God and I will not stop praising you. I will not stop being faithful to you. And in that moment, God knows that you are true to him. You are not just praising him because of what you're going to get, but you're praising him because you just want him to be your God. So, Amen. Anyway, Darren, I think. Declan. Declan, sorry. Declan. I just wanted to say, like, an example. I just want to say two examples, as a matter of fact. From John, what Don said and what he said. So now I just want to start with Don's. Like it Don's reminds me of the story of the Israelites. He's mm. done a lot of things for them, saved them mm. out of Eden, out of Egypt. 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 And then now open the red and then open the old Jordan River. Mm-hmm. And then he also gave them manna and water for them to drink and eat. But then now here they, they are complaining. Mm. So we don't have this thing. We don't have this thing. Sometimes I just think say, it was just intentional. They just... <laughs> okay, so... Mm. Okay, so I want to go to what Uncle James just said. Speak, it was about James, about Job, I meant. Mm-hmm. Job, his friends was telling him to mm. curse God because of what he mm. But then Job still said this. He he tell he praised God. And also I watched a bit a movie about someone. He, his legs, he loved he thought that he lost his wife and and his child. He also he couldn't move his legs. But then this is what happened. One day, immediately. One person, it is called my conclusion, but then one person, he, <laughs> yes, he worshipped God only when he talked to God. He, he worshipped him when, only when he he feels so. Mm. But then that other person, the other person who was a, a man, he said this, that, oh Lord, we thank you. We, I will worship you like I've never worshipped you before. Even though, <laughs> even though his sons and everything was he he thought that everyone thought that his sons was his son was dead and his wife Mm. still said this uh, worshiping so there are two conclusions either you if either you say that god is good or god is bad Mm. well well awesome Ampa, were you going to say something? Elder, I think Ampa had something to say. Oh, Ampa had something to say. I think we also have Esther um, okay. also, also waiting. Ampa, go ahead. So I, I just wanted to add to what Benedict said, uh, that we should uh, end our respect from God. So when we read the Bible, uh, it says Satan knows the Bible more than you. So if we read the Bible more than mm. When Satan comes to temptate us, we will know how to answer because when you read the Bible carefully, say uh, the three temptations. So, so Satan have even talked to God and tried. So when it, one of the temptations said that, or uh, the Satan said that God, uh, if you are the son of Jesus, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, and the, God will send His angels to come and take you. But so God said that He is not the fool to listen to what Satan said. Mm. Because, uh, Test the Lord because you will receive bad things. So we should read the Bible so that Satan will, ne- will not use the Bible to receive or against us. Amen. 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 All right, Esther, I'll take you. So I just wanted to say um, something called like an acronym, which is like, for example, um, you have a word called like a name, for example, Esther, mm-hmm. right? And then there's um, attributes or like things about my name, right? Like, mm-hmm. um, like, like for, e is, yeah, for like E, yeah, like for like S is like super, for example, or that's right. God. So I just wanted to say like something for an acronym for God. So one G is for good, amen, o is for omniscient, and amen, or dependable. So I just amen. Want to add, Amen. 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 God is omniscient and he is dependable. That's he right. Is dependable indeed. All right. So let's round up real quickly. We have a couple of 
more couple more points I just wanted to make. Um, I think I made this point earlier that as we continue to appreciate, just like human beings, when we appreciate and we celebrate, you know, what people have done for us, they are encouraged to what to do more. And God is not too different from that in the sense that as we express our genuine thanks for who he is and the things he does, he does even what more. And that is why we say that God is good all the time and all the time God is good. All right. So my last question is that we already talked about all the ways that God demonstrates his goodness to us. Now, God told Israel that you guys remind me of my goodness. Mm. God told the people that every time they sing, one of the songs he taught them to sing was the Lord is good and his love endures forever. That is what we have in our, our memory verse, verse five. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. And the question I wanted to ask was, okay, does God forget that he's good? Is it for him or is it for us? Does he need a reminder of his goodness? Does he forget? Ariel, what do you think? Ariel, start. Um, God doesn't need reminders, but I think he said this to uh, Israel because I think he was trying to remind us that um, God's worth is amazing and that we can build trust in him and build confidence in him and everything that is good because he is amazing and that we should stand by his side wow amen wow i love i love that ariel i love that yes somebody else uh joel let me take joel um god doesn't forget because he's the all-knowing god it's a reminder for us so then we won't forget him or turn away from him so Mm -hmm. we won't forget and we don't turn away from him very important okay let me take esther um, so this is one of the questions I was reading to answer. This is one of my favorite questions that I want to answer. And to add to Joel and Ariel's contribution, the same thing I wanted to say is, know that God said this to build our faith, and he does not need to be reminded, but we do. Amen. Amen. Wow. I love that emphatic. We do. James, we need the reminder. Yes, James, what did you want to say? I was just going to say that God doesn't need our worship. So you can't be like, I'm not going to worship God. Mm. And I'm begging you to worship you. He, 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 he doesn't need it. What we're worshiping is for our congratulations to God, our praise. And, and it's true. Like and us, us humans, when you're getting a ride for someone and then he, and then, you know, he, he drops you at your destination, you say, thank you. And That's sometimes, right. you say, sometimes you say, thank you. And then you give him a tip. As you give them money. So our worship, as a matter of fact, the Bible says that God will command stones to worship him. And stones is what our walls are made of, what our houses are made of. So if you don't worship, if you don't worship God and he commands your whole building to shake and the walls <laughs> crash on you, it's <laughs> your fault. <laughs> Darren, were you going to say something? Go ahead, Darren. And then Benedict. Yeah. Okay, I'm not to say that. You know, God has not been reminders. Actually, it is us who need the reminders. Because the people of Israel in the Bible, mm. when last week we were talking about judges, when you read like, the entire book, you realize that every time the judge died, you say, hey, the judge is dead. Let's go back to the city. Yes. <laughs> that is yep. true. The Bible said that they, they committed sins worse than the people before them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who, you know what's weird, right? They took their own earrings and they made themselves an idol. How, how can you worship something that you created with your hands? Mm-hmm. Uh. Your own gold that you bought on the market for like some cheap price, you mold it into a calf of all things. Now, why don't you go and worship like a mountain or something? Well, you make it into <laughs> a calf and worship. Look how, look how that turned out for them. So God was actually trying to remind the Israelites because, but like, like Darren once said, they got bread straight from heaven. Man, mm. think I'm going to get bread straight from heaven, but they were always doing sins and they were always like, you mm. know, obeying God, disrespecting God. So God was trying to do that to keep them 
away because God's patience always runs out. He came and and um he they put they put poisonous snakes and they can they killed so many people because it was their fault for disobeying God. Mm. So they needed the reminder, and sometimes we need a reminder because every time mm. something goes wrong in our life, guess who we blame? The, the oh yeah. God. We blame two people for things who the, the good or bad things that happen in our life. We blame God and we blame the devil. So sometimes whenever something happens, oh, the devil did this or why is God doing this to me? But we, we're, we're, we're forgetting the fact that what if we disobeyed God? And that's what happened. Mm. Maybe what if we're not getting God's protection because it was our fault? How can you go and build a house, break down the house, and expect to live in, inside that house? Mm-hmm. We sometimes need that reminder of God's presence. Mm. Amen. Wonderful. All right, I'll take Declan and Darren and... Benedict. Benedict, too. Okay, yes. Thank you, Max. So this is what I wanted to say about what James said. My, I've, I've already said this a lot of times. Mm-hmm. But then, like, my father told a story. That mm-hmm. what if that you actually imagine that someone, what if that there was a very good uh, a group of people, well, each time one sent, they just go to the priest for, for forgiveness oh, yeah. and then go to the priest for forgiveness because they are just keep on sinning. And mm-hmm. that, is that they were living in sin. So I don't know like if the Israelites were trying to live in sin or <laughs> Actually, or like, if they were trying if to, they, they were very good at it. Or they were like <laughs> complaining. They were just stubborn. Mm-hmm. Yes, but yeah. they needed the things actually, actually. Because someone, mm. Elijah, and also Jesus, were able to go 40 days and 40 nights. So you're all fasting, nothing, just walking. And even, and at the time that uh, like Jesus, and at the time yeah, Jesus came to you when you are weak. When you are spiritually weak, mm. physically, but then Jesus, even though he was weak, um, he still had a lot. He his spiritual thing was like on level hundred. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You, you, it wouldn't even work. But then, just like Benedict said, that just actually i don't know who said this but then he said that he could call stones oh, yeah, to do what you said mm-hmm. now an elder, elder an elder also in cleveland the, in cleveland district said this that he could call the chairs that you are sitting on right now and turn them into sons of abraham who mm. send them to abraham who worship the lord you could mm-hmm. even tell that the chair or the place where you are, just into a, a church right now. Boom. That's right. Amen. Benedict, right. go Benedict, ahead. Yes. Mm-hmm. I just want to say, God, God meant that to remind us. Because sometimes we focus on the good things. Oh, yeah, I won the lot of $1 million. Let's go. Mm. Don't even say thank you, Lord. We won a raffle or we got 100%. We don't even say thank you, Lord. Or the bad things that happen. Oh, we just start throwing tantrums and start getting madder and madder and madder, knowing that bad things attract bad things. So you're only wishing bad upon yourself. We need to acknowledge that God is God, and we have to praise him in the good times and the bad times. The That's why I thought that God, that, that comment was, well, what God said was to Amen. remind Amen. Israelites. Amen. And, and so I, I, I appreciate you guys. This is amazing. Everything that you've said is right on the money. The one thing I just want to add to it is this. Sometimes things can go so wrong in our lives. Mm. Good, bad things can happen to us and it can get us to the point where we feel like giving up. We feel like forgetting everything. We feel like we don't even want to live anymore because we think that our whole life has collapsed on us. Everything has gone wrong. Now, one of the reasons, and I think all of you guys have mentioned it, is the fact that God didn't want us to get to the point of hopelessness. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want us to get to the point where we think like, look, everything is down and done and, you know, is one and done. And that there's no hope for us. 
So he told the Israelites, no matter how bad the situation is, no matter how good the situation is, remember this, the Lord is good. His love endures forever. His faithfulness to what? All generations. Think about it. All generations. A generation is generally about 30 years, you know. So if all generations can experience the love and the faithfulness of God, it means that there is no situation that is too big for God. Amen. There's no Amen. situation. That is one of the reasons, that's one of the most important reasons why God says, whenever you get the chance to sing this song, sing it. The Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness to all generations. So whether you guys from age 8 to 13 or whether you are between 30 and 50 like me and Auntie Golda <laughs> or whether you are grandpas and grandmas you know with a walking stick and all whitened hair and everything it doesn't matter what generation you are in we can still praise God because God always wants us to remind us that he is there for us mm. no matter how bad it is and I'm sure that you guys have seen that in the book of Judges when you were reading it that as you've read so far, that yes, they make mistakes, but then in the midst of their trouble, what do they do? They call unto God, God comes to their help. And even though they go back and make the same mistakes <laughs> and even worse, they can still go back to God and call on God. And that is why God says, praise me, like um, I think it was um, Benedict said to finalize that. We praise God both in the good times and the what? The bad times. Amen. Amen. Wow. This has been amazing. Wonderful. wonderful. This has been wonderful. And I appreciate you guys. So, Auntie Golda, I don't know how we're going to do this. So, I want us to teach a song. Go right ahead, Elder. Go I want right to teach ahead. a song. Um, I don't know if you can let me share the song. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I can put that here. So it's a simple song, kind of capturing um, what we've learned so far about the fact that God is good and his love endures forever. So let me see if I can get my song here. Where are you? Hold on one second, guys. title like i said you are good by israel houghton okay so it goes like this lord you are good and your mercy endure it forever lord you are good and your mercy endure it forever people from every nation and tongue from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. We worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you. For who you are. All right. So let's see if we can take it through. So if you guys can all unmute yourselves and then we can run through the song. Okay. You all ready? <laughs> all right. So, yep. Thank you, Esther. Thank you for the lyrics. All right. So we are ready. One, two, yeah. three. So, Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. So, one, two, three, and go. Lord, you are good and your mercy and forever. Let's sing one more time. Lord, you are good and your mercy and your forever. Okay, so we'll go to the next one. People from every nation, nation tongue, 
From, from generation, generation to generation. Let's do that part. People, People from, from every nation and From generation to generation. All right, so let's start from the top again. Lord, you are good and your mercy and your are forever. So one, two, go. Lord, you are good and your mercy forever. Oh, Lord, you are good and your mercy and your forever. Oh, people. People from every nation and from generation to generation. We welcome you kids as we round up for today's lesson let's continue to praise god whether in the good times or in the bad times because he says he's reminding us and we need a reminder that what the lord is good and his love endures for what forever his faithfulness to all generations all generations so it doesn't matter which part of the generation we belong to, whether the younger ones, the older ones, the middle ones, we all come together to give God the praise that he deserves. Amen. 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 Hi, hi, children. Hi, 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 children of Lord. 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 Amen. Amen. You see, I told you, the best person to teach us praise and <laughs> worship it's Uncle James, Elder James. God bless you so much. I have learned so much that God is good and his love endures forever. And then one of our powerful weapons is praise and worship. That when our praises go up, the glory of the Lord will also do what? Will come yeah. down and we will see the goodness of the Lord. Listen, and the James will be back next month and we will take another lesson on praise or worship, either of those. And by the time we are done, by the end of this year, you guys will be so powerful at worshiping God that, in fact, when you go to church and they say it's time for worship, you would yourself experience it personally. And you know what happens when you experience it like that? Everybody around you, you see, praise and worship is so contagious. Everybody mm -hmm. around you will see, oh, wow, look at this wonderful, precious child praising God. What am I sitting down doing? Let me also praise God. So God mm -hmm. bless you, Elder James. God bless you, all precious ones. All too soon, we have come to the end of our program. Just as you all say, anytime that it gets all more and more exciting, then it's time to go. But never worry at all. We will come back again next Saturday for another wonderful, wonderful episode of 
case time with Jesus. God bless you all. And let us say bye to all our friends that joined us. And let us say God bless you too. To Uncle James. Say, yeah. Yeah. Elder, God bless God bless you. You so Thank you guys. Much. Thank you for and having bye me. Bye for now, fun. everyone. God bless bye. you. Bye. God bless you. God bless you too. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful week. God bless you. Bye. 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 bye.